First off, I never served in the military. But I think that a great way to thank those that did is to try to lead a life worthy of the sacrifices that they've made. Thank you. And I've got, I've got more on that later. Now, I love fly fishing. I grew up on the plains of eastern New Mexico and west Texas, right in the middle of some good fishing country. The only problem was you had to go 500 miles in any direction to get to it. But what we did have were small ponds and lakes full of fish. And I can remember as a young child sitting on the banks of those ponds, watching a red and white bobber and wondering what swam beneath the surface. Curious to know if there was a, a bass next to that log over there or a bluegill on the other side of that weed bed. And it was those experiences that led me down a journey that brought me here to Bozeman, Montana, the mecca of fly fishing in North America. There you go. Give it up. And I've always wondered why I loved fly fishing. A couple of years ago, a friend of mine and I were floating down the Yellowstone River. I was on the oars, and he was in the front of the boat. We'd gotten to some skinny water, so I got out to push a little bit, and he made a cast and snagged a log, or at least he thought it was a log, until it turned and swam downstream. I grabbed the net out of the boat, and off we go after this fish, through the ripples, over the rocks, under the trees, and after what seemed like an eternity, we finally got this fish into some calm water. I dipped the net into the river, and when I pulled it out, this was our reward. A 26-inch Yellowstone brown trout. Wow. Now, <laughs> I never thought I'd get applause for somebody else's fish. That's great. <laughs> now, that fish was a blast to be a part of. It was exciting. But that couldn't have been the reason why I love fly fishing, because catching fish like this is a lot of fun, too, what I call pretty fish. <laughs> but those can't be the reason why I love fly fishing either, because there's a lot of times we go fishing, and we don't catch anything at all. Still love the sport. But I think, through years of thinking about it, that I have figured it out. Let me take you all fishing right now. Imagine yourself standing in this water. Now, I want all of you to close your eyes and see if, you can, see if you can feel the rocks under your feet and the cold water running across your legs. Now, take a deep breath and smell the willows on the bank. Taste the clean mountain air. Now, I want you to all open your eyes and think about what you might hear. Now, it's paying attention to those senses when I'm on the river that makes me love fly fishing. It's the one thing that makes me feel calm. Now, I'd like to talk to you for a second about the opposite of calm. And it's what our combat veterans experience in hostile and kinetic environments Constantly and crucially on high alert. Around 20% of them returning from war suffer from post-traumatic stress, or PTS. But many don't seek treatment because of a negative stigma of personal weakness. Now, PTS is caused when someone experiences a, a terrifying or traumatic event that puts their life in danger. And symptoms can later include anxiety, uncontrollable thoughts about the events, flashbacks, and severe depression. It's as if their brain overreacts to common stimuli that has nothing to do with the events. But combat veterans suffering from PTS are four times more likely to commit suicide. A report prepared for the Department of Defense showed that in 2009, more combat veterans committed suicide than were killed in Afghanistan and Iraq combined. 
Now, there are a lot of treatments for PTS. Cognitive therapy, antidepressants. But one local organization is using the activity and the serenity of fly fishing as a form of treatment, as a catalyst for positive change. And that's Warriors in Quiet Waters Foundation. This foundation brings combat veterans with seen and unseen wounds here to Bozeman, Montana, at no expense to the participants, for the ultimate fly fishing experience. They're outfitted with waders and boots and rods and reels and flies, and they're taught how to fly fish. They're then paired with a companion and an expert guide, and they're taken to one of our blue water or blue ribbon trout streams around Bozeman in hopes that they can experience what I tried to walk you through earlier. This can help the warriors redirect purpose, improve their interpersonal communication, achieve success, ease the transition towards civilian life, improve their functional abilities, and help them progress towards reintegration. At the end of their time here in Bozeman, they get to take all their gear home with them so that they get to independently continue the craft of fly fishing. But they also get to take home some valuable tools, tools that will help them cope with their struggles after war. Now let's take a look at a couple of the warriors that I'm talking about. I came back from combat and found I needed relief. And the more I was out there fly fishing, the more I knew I needed more of it. I was four feet away from the blast. I considered myself dead. Feeling sorry for yourself doesn't get a damn thing done. Way out there. there it is. There we go. <laughs> <First one. laughs> you know, this uh, uh, this river healed me. See, that's just fool for me to just do this. Yeah, you'll see. I feel honored and privileged that something that I love to do can be used to help our veterans. But organizations like Warriors in Quiet Waters can't do it without volunteers and help from people like you and me. Now, a lot of TED Talks tell you to go out and find something you're passionate about or do something you love. And I'll encourage you to do the same. But, when I, but I also want to ask you to please be thankful for those opportunities. And never take your ability to be calm for granted. Thank you.